Right, hi S3. Um, today I'm going to be going over uh, how to uh, deal with vectors in three dimensions. Okay, so we looked a lot at vectors in two dimensions before we stopped. So I just want to tell you to start with that pretty much all the rules that apply for two dimensional vectors apply for three dimensional vectors. Um, so let's just quickly go through them. I want to look at, first of all, um, addition and subtraction of three-dimensional vectors. I want to look at how we multiply a vector by a scalar. Remember, a scalar is just really a number. How we find the magnitude of a three-dimensional vector. And finally, how we work out the components um, of position vectors. Okay. Right, so starting with um, addition and subtraction. Right, if I have a vector u with components, now it's just got three components instead of two. So if it's got components x, y, and z, and if I've got another vector v with components uh, a, b, and c, to work out a uh, vector u plus v, uh, all we do is we just add together those components. So we would do x, y, z plus a, b, c. And we would just add the components together. So we'd add together x plus a, we do y plus b, and z plus c. Okay, just like we did in two dimensions. Um, same for multiplying. If I have a vector u and it's got components x, y, z, and I want to multiply it, uh, by a scalar value k. Okay, so if I want to find out the value of ku, okay, k times u, um, all I would do is I would then multiply all the components of u by the number k, whatever that may be. Okay, so I would end up with uh, components kx, so k times x, k times y, and k times z. Okay. Um, when we worked out the magnitude of a two-dimensional vector, I showed you how we used Pythagoras' theorem. Um, the theorem um, can be used in three dimensions too. So again, if I've got a vector u and it has coordinates x, y, z, if I want to work out the magnitude of u, now remember we denote magnitude with those two wee lines um, round u. And the magnitude of u would simply be the square root of x squared plus y squared, and because it's three dimensions, plus z squared. Okay, so that's the magnitude of u. Right, and last of all, our position vectors. So if I have a, 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 um, a point g that has coordinates a, a b, c, and another a uh, point H, which has a uh, coordinates X, Y, and Z. Um, if I want to work out the components of the vector G H, okay, just like in two dimensions, I do H, the position vector H minus the position vector G. Now remember, position vectors have just got the same components as the coordinates of g and h. So the components of the ve the position vector h would be x, y, and z. And the components of the position vector g are going to be a, b, and c. So to work out the components of the vector g, h, I would simply do x take away a, y take away b, and z take away c there. Okay, right, I'm going to go through a few wee examples just to show you how this works with numbers. Okay, so let's start off with a wee example one. Example one, um, and you can just take this down in your notes, guys. Okay, so if I have a vector u that has got components a uh, two, three, negative four. And if I've got a vector v that has got components a uh, minus five, two, three, I 
I want to find the components of u plus v. Okay, u plus v. So to find the components of u plus v, I just take the components of the vector u, which was 2, 3, negative 4, and I'm just adding on the components of the vector v, which was negative 5, 2, 3. Okay, and we just simply add the numbers together. So we do 2 add minus 5, so that will give us minus 3. And then we do 3 add 2, which gives us 5. And then we do minus 4 add 3, which gives us a minus 1. Okay, so that would be u plus v would give us minus 3, 5, minus 1. Okay, so I'll call that part a. Okay, now if I wanted to do u minus v, I would simply subtract the components. So I would take the vector u, which is 2, 3, minus 4, and I would subtract the components of v, which would be negative 5, 2, 3. Okay, so we get 2 minus minus 5, so that's really 2 plus 5, giving us 7. 3 minus 2, which is 1, and minus 4 minus 3, which is minus 7. So the components of u minus v would be 7, 1, minus 7. Okay, now just excuse me while I move my paper away, but it's okay. Okay, let's go move down here and do example two. Example two. Right, this one is an example of multiplication by a scalar. So if I've got a vector A which has got components seven minus two and three. Seven minus two three. And I want to find, sorry, find the components of 3a. Okay, so I want to find 3a. So all I do is I take the vector a and I've got to times it by 3. Okay, so 3a would simply equal 3 times the components of a, which are 7, minus 2 and 3. Okay, so 3a is going to equal 21 minus 6 and 9. Okay, that would be the components of 3a because I just do 3 times 7 to get 21, 3 times the minus 2 to get the minus 6, and 3 times 3 to get the 9. Okay, so that's an example 2 there. Alright, let's look on to example 3, which is a wee example of finding the magnitude of a vector. Okay, so let's say that AB, the vector AB, has got components 4, 5, minus 2. Okay, and I want to find the magnitude. Okay, so you those two lines mean magnitude. So the magnitude of AB. Okay, so to find the magnitude of AB, well... The magnitude of AB would simply um, be the square root of all its components added together. Okay, so AB will be equal to the square root. Okay, so the first component there was 4, so it would be 4 squared. Plus the second component was 5, so that would be 5 squared. Plus the third component, which is minus 2, so that would be minus 2 squared. Okay, and a uh, 4 squared would be 16, 5 squared is 25, okay, and minus 2 squared, well, when we square a negative number, it just becomes positive, so I'm going to get 4 there, okay. So that leaves me with the square root of 
well, that will be 45. Okay, now we leave it as a third, folks. Okay, we can simplify the third. If we simplify 45, we get 3 root 5. Okay, and we can write it as a simplified third. But don't write it as a decimal. Okay, and so that's how we find the magnitude of a three-dimensional vector. Okay, now the last thing for today that I want you to do is to be able to work out the components of a position vector. So a wee example here, example four. Um, right, quite a common exam question this. So if I tell you that the coordinates of P are um, 2, 3, 1 and the coordinates of Q are 3, minus 1, 2. Okay, so P is 2, 3, 1 and Q is 3, minus 1, 2. I want to find, for part A, I want to find the uh, components of PQ. Okay. And for part B, I want to find the magnitude. Okay, so I want to find the magnitude of PQ. Yeah, okay, magnitude of PQ. Okay. So let's, sorry, that's my battery, my phone running down. Um, my flash has gone off. Right, we'll try and get through this without it running out completely. Right, let's start off with part E. So we want to find the components of PQ. So to find the components of PQ, right, now these are, we take the position vector Q and it's minus P. Okay, so just like in two dimensions. It's position vector Q minus position vector P. Now, remember that the components of your posi position vector Q are just the coordinates of your, uh, of your point Q. Okay, so that would be 3 minus 1, 2. Okay, and the, coord the <laughs> components of the position vector P are just your coordinates of P, which are 2, 3, and one there, okay, two, three, and one. So it's Q minus P, and we just subtract those components there. So three minus two will give us one. And minus one minus three will give us minus four. And two minus one gives us one. Okay, so the components of PQ are one, negative four, one. So that's the answer to part A. Right, moving on to part B now, folks. Okay, B is to work out the magnitude of PQ. Now, it's just like we did in the previous question, okay? Magnitude of PQ will simply be... Sorry, I'm going to focus on that here, folks. Uh, square root of all the components added together, okay? So, um, 1 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 1 squared. Okay. And doing that, 1 squared is just 1. Minus 4 squared gives me 16. So 1 plus 16 plus another 1. Giving me the square root of 18. Again, we're going to leave it as a third, which would be 3 root 2. Okay, right. I'm going to give you a wee exercise uh, to do on uh, some vectors similar to this. Okay, and you'll find that on Show My Homework. Right, well, good luck. And um, I look forward to seeing all your answers, folks. Bye.